Picture yourself in the year 52 AD. Roman trade ships are frequenting the shores of Malabar coast, a lush region in the southwest of India. Amongst the merchants and sailors, there is a man with a mission far beyond trade, the Apostle, St. Thomas. Hello, and welcome to Philosophy Examined, the YouTube channel where we delve into the depths of philosophical and spiritual thought from around the world. Today, we're sailing to the shores of ancient India, to bring to life the intriguing story of St. Thomas, known as the founder of Christianity in India. The narrative of St. Thomas extends from the written scriptures of the Bible into the annals of Indian folklore. Before setting sail for India, St. Thomas was an integral part of the close-knit group of disciples in Jerusalem. He was known as Thomas Didymus, the twin. The Bible does not offer extensive details about his early life, but we know that he was a fisherman by trade, a humble and ordinary man, chosen by Jesus Christ to be one of his twelve apostles. His most distinguishing characteristic, perhaps, was his propensity for skepticism and inquisitiveness, which earned him the nickname, Doubting Thomas. It was his questioning nature that led to one of the most powerful moments in the New Testament, refusing to believe that Jesus had risen from the dead until he could see and touch Christ's wounds himself. This instance, though often viewed negatively, also reflects Thomas's deep desire for a personal and tangible connection with the divine. This transformation from skepticism to belief became a defining aspect of his faith journey, setting the stage for his future apostolic work in distant lands. His life in Jerusalem was marked by proximity to Christ, from witnessing miracles to partaking in the Last Supper. These experiences shaped him, strengthening his faith and preparing him for the arduous task of carrying the message of Christianity to the far corners of the world. His tale is one of transformation and determination, where doubt gave way to unyielding faith. St. Thomas, once needing physical evidence to believe in Christ's resurrection, emerged from his skeptical cocoon to become one of the most passionate and committed apostles. His path was not one that kept him within the safety and familiarity of the Roman Empire. Instead, his conviction spurred him to journey across unknown seas and foreign lands, carrying with him the teachings of Christ. He dared to venture to the mysterious East, where language, customs, and religions vastly differed from his homeland. Yet, he was undeterred. His story, as preserved in the annals of history and as whispered down generations through local law, is a testament to the indomitable power of faith that can drive a person to overcome unimaginable hurdles. His journey to India wasn't merely a geographical expedition, but a profound exploration of spiritual landscapes, enabling a dialogue of faiths that echoes even today. The Apostle Thomas is believed to have disembarked in Museries, an ancient and prosperous port city that was a significant node in the global maritime trade routes of the time. Museries was located on the Malabar coast, specifically in the modern-day Indian state of Kerala. During the time of St. Thomas's arrival, Museries was a bustling hub renowned for its commerce in spices, silk, ivory, and precious stones. Traders from around the world, including the Romans, Arabs, Greeks, and Chinese, frequented this port, making it a melting pot of cultures and languages. The people inhabiting Museries and its vicinity belonged to a diverse range of social and cultural backgrounds. The society was primarily Dravidian, a term encompassing various South Indian ethnic groups. Their language was ancient Tamil or Malayalam, two of the primary languages of the region. Their lifestyle was significantly influenced by trade and the region's abundant natural resources. Religious life was marked by a mixture of early Dravidian spiritual beliefs, Buddhism, Jainism, and various sects of Hinduism. 
This culturally rich and diverse backdrop is where St. Thomas introduced the teachings of Christianity. Today, New Ceres is identified with the region around present-day Patanam and Kodungalo in Kerala. Although the exact location of the ancient city remains a topic of historical and archaeological exploration, several artifacts and ruins excavated in this region bear testament to its rich, multicultural past. The once flourishing port city might have lost its ancient grandeur over time, but its legacy lives on, immortalized in the annals of history and through the journey of St. Thomas. His mission wasn't merely to trade, but to spread the teachings of Jesus Christ. However, this was a land rich in spiritual diversity, with Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism coexisting peacefully. The question remains, how could he introduce a new religion here? St. Thomas's approach was characterized by a deep respect for the existing cultural and spiritual practices of the people he met. Instead of attempting to supplant these practices, he sought ways to engage in dialogue and understanding. For instance, he encountered people who worshipped various gods and goddesses in their local pantheon. Instead of dismissing their beliefs, he drew parallels between the moral teachings of Christianity and the ethical principles already existing within their faith systems. He explained the stories of Jesus' miracles not just as supernatural events, but as demonstrations of love, compassion, and humility. St. Thomas also embraced and acknowledged the similarities between the teachings of Christ and the philosophies of the Indian religions. In dialogues with Buddhists and Jains, he discussed concepts such as nonviolence, forgiveness, and compassion, which are central to these Indian religions as well as to Christianity. One well-known legend that exemplifies his approach involves the construction of a palace for a local king. The king gave him money to build a royal mansion. Instead, St. Thomas used the funds to help the poor and needy. When the king discovered this, he was initially furious. However, St. Thomas explained that he had indeed built a mansion for the king, not in this world, but in heaven, by doing good deeds in the king's name. This story, whether historical or allegorical, demonstrates how St. Thomas communicated the Christian ethos of charity and compassion in a context that respected and engaged with the local culture. Through his open-hearted interactions, St. Thomas strived to share the Christian faith as a path of love and brotherhood, harmoniously coexisting with and complementing the rich tapestry of Indian spiritual traditions. His message resonated with many, and soon, a small Christian community began to take root. St. Thomas didn't impose his beliefs, rather, he invited individuals to embrace the message of love and brotherhood that was the cornerstone of Christ's teachings. The conversion of the King of Malabar is indeed a pivotal point in the narrative of St. Thomas's mission in India. According to tradition, the king was Gondafares, sometimes known by his local name, Gundafaris. While historical records about Gondafares are sparse, he is believed to have been a powerful ruler whose domains spanned across the Malabar coast. As the legend goes, St. Thomas's reputation as a preacher and a healer reached the ears of King Gondafares. Intrigued by these tales and the growing Christian community, the king invited St. Thomas to his court. St. Thomas spoke of the teachings of Christ, his message of love, forgiveness, and humility, which deeply moved the king. St. Thomas's words and demeanor exuded a profound peace and serenity, which struck a chord with the king. He was so moved that he decided to embrace Christianity, a monumental decision for a ruler in those times. This conversion wasn't merely a change of faith for one individual, it had broader socio-political implications. The king's conversion provided an impetus to the growth of the nascent Christian community in India. His patronage lent legitimacy to the new faith, encouraging more people to embrace Christianity without fear of reprisals. Moreover, the king's conversion didn't lead to the imposition of Christianity on his subjects, reflecting St. Thomas's approach of peaceful coexistence. The subjects were given the freedom to follow their beliefs, 
while the kingdom provided a safe haven for the Christian faith to flourish and grow. Thus, the king's conversion was a watershed moment in the establishment of Christianity in India, serving to further embed the faith in the diverse spiritual landscape of the country. Over the years, Saint Thomas traveled across the length and breadth of India, spreading the Christian faith. He established seven and a half churches, also known as Harapolakal in the local Malayalam language, that would secure the future of Christianity in India. They include Malankara, or Kodungalur, this is where St. Thomas is believed to have arrived in AD 52 and established the first church, primarily for the converts from Judaism living in the area. Paliyur, located near Guruvayur, Paliyur was a well-established Brahmin community. St. Thomas's miracle of making the pond water drinkable and causing a small spring to gush forth from a rock, reportedly led to several conversions here. Kokamangalam, at this church, St. Thomas baptized several families, who were considered the oldest Christian families in India. He also ordained a teacher from the parish. Nilakal, or Chail, situated near Western Ghats, this church served the Christian community, in the busy trade route between Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Niranam, according to tradition, St. Thomas performed miracles in Niranam, leading to numerous conversions. The church here was an important Christian center in South India. Kolam, or Quilon, here, St. Thomas is said to have founded a church in AD 56, which subsequently grew into a significant Christian congregation. Thovathamkode, or Tomiakovil, often called the Half Church, it was supposedly built for the use of a family converted by St. Thomas. It's believed to be the last church he built, hence, referred to as the Half Church to signify his incomplete mission. Each of these churches became centers of Christian faith, serving the spiritual needs of their congregations and carrying the torch of the faith that St. Thomas had brought to their shores. They played a crucial role in the propagation and establishment of Christianity in India, standing as testimonials of the apostolic era. Today, these churches still stand, not only bearing witness to the epic journey of St. Thomas and the birth of Christianity in India, but also serving as a testament to India's long-standing tradition of religious tolerance and pluralism. The fact that a new faith could take root, thrive, and continue to flourish in an already spiritually diverse landscape speaks volumes about the inherent acceptance and openness of the Indian society. It underscores the country's rich history of welcoming and embracing various faith traditions, thereby enriching its own cultural and spiritual tapestry. The journey of St. Thomas was not devoid of trials and tribulations. As he traveled through India, spreading the message of Christianity, he encountered resistance and opposition from different quarters. The introduction of a new faith, with its distinct beliefs and rituals, was met with suspicion and even hostility in some areas. One such instance was in the city of Mylapore. Legend tells us that a group of Orthodox Brahmins were wary of St. Thomas's growing influence and the rise of a new religious community. Fearful that their own social and religious standing might be undermined, they conspired against St. Thomas. In another episode, a certain king, Mahadivan, was reportedly against the Christian faith due to misunderstandings and misinformation about its tenets. His opposition posed a significant challenge for St. Thomas and his followers, threatening their safety and the survival of the nascent Christian community. Despite these hardships and challenges, St. Thomas remained steadfast. He believed he was on a divine mission entrusted to him by Jesus Christ. This unwavering faith became his source of strength, enabling him to weather the storms of adversity. It was this resolute belief that gave him the courage to persist, to continue his work, undeterred by the trials he faced. Through every struggle, he held on to his mission spreading the teachings of Christ and fostering a spirit of love, understanding, and compassion. His journey is a testament to the resilience of faith in the face of opposition. 
St. Thomas's journey culminated in the city of Mylapore, now part of modern-day Chennai. Here, the apostle settled down, continuing his work of preaching and spreading the message of Christianity. The people of Mylapore remember him not just as an apostle, but also as a healer and a guide, deeply devoted to his spiritual practices. Interestingly, the use of the term, Samadhi, borrowed from Indian spiritual traditions, conveys the depth of St. Thomas's integration into the local culture. Samadhi represents the highest state of meditative consciousness wherein one is fully united with the divine. It reflects the level of spiritual attainment St. Thomas reached during his time in India, an embodiment of his intense devotion and communion with God. Yet, despite the respect he earned from many, his presence and growing influence were not welcomed by all. Some felt threatened by this new faith that was gaining ground. Fearful of the societal changes that the spread of Christianity might herald, they sought to eliminate what they saw as the root of this transformation. Around AD 72, St. Thomas was martyred on a hill outside the city, now known as St. Thomas Mount. As per tradition, he is believed to have been killed by a spear near the outskirts of the city of Mylapore. The account states that a group of people who were hostile towards his teachings and the growing influence of Christianity conspired against him. It's said that, while St. Thomas was in deep prayer on a hill, a hostile assailant came from behind and pierced him with a spear, leading to his death. This hill is now known as St. Thomas Mount, a place of pilgrimage for Christians from all over the world. It is believed that after the martyrdom of St. Thomas in Mylapore, his mortal remains were interned in the vicinity of where he was killed. Later, a significant part of these relics was taken to Edessa, a city in Mesopotamia, now Urfa in modern-day Turkey, in the 3rd century. However, it's claimed that a relic of St. Thomas, specifically a fragment of his bone, was left behind in Mylapore. Today, this revered relic is said to be housed in San Tom Basilica, a beautiful cathedral built over the site of St. Thomas's original tomb in Mylapore. The relic serves as a tangible link to the apostle, symbolizing his life, sacrifice, and the significant legacy he left behind. For believers and followers of St. Thomas, this bone fragment holds deep spiritual significance. It is viewed with reverence, and many pilgrims visit the San Tomi Basilica to pay homage and seek blessings. The relic's display is a testament to the profound impact St. Thomas made on the Indian subcontinent and the ongoing devotion of those who continue to follow his teachings. St. Thomas met his end not with despair, but with the calm acceptance of a man who had dedicated his life to a cause greater than himself. His death, far from extinguishing the light of his teachings, served to galvanize his followers. It cemented his status as a martyr, and his life and teachings became a beacon for the growing Christian community in India, inspiring them to keep the flame of faith alive in the face of adversity. It's worth noting though that the exact details of St. Thomas's death, like much of his life, are steeped in historical and theological mystery. However, the overarching narrative remains consistent across various traditions that St. Thomas was martyred for his unwavering dedication to spreading the teachings of Jesus Christ. His death symbolizes the ultimate sacrifice in the pursuit of his divine mission and the spread of Christianity in India. St. Thomas's life is a tale of exploration, not just of physical lands, but of spiritual landscapes. It's a story of how faith can cross boundaries, can inspire, and build communities of believers. The legacy of St. Thomas is vividly manifested in the robust Christian communities found across India, particularly in the state of Kerala. The seeds that St. Thomas sowed have grown into various Christian denominations, each with their unique cultural and liturgical traditions. Among the most significant of these are the Syrian Christians, also known as the St. Thomas Christians, who trace their origins back to the Apostle himself. Over time, they've adopted various liturgical practices from Syrian Christianity due to historical connections with the churches in the Middle East. However, 
They've also preserved many of their unique Indian customs and traditions. This synergy of cultures gives the Syrian Christians of Kerala their distinct identity. Their liturgical language is Syriac, a dialect of Aramaic, the language believed to have been spoken by Jesus. The Syrian Christians are further divided into various churches, including the Malankara Orthodox Syrian Church, the Jacobite Syrian Christian Church, the Syro Malabar Church, and the Mar Thoma Syrian Church. These churches, while maintaining their individual administrative structures, share a common heritage that harkens back to the evangelical work of St. Thomas. The Orthodox Greek Christian community in India, including the Indian, Malankara, Orthodox Church, also traces its apostolic succession to St. Thomas. While they follow the liturgical practices of the Oriental Orthodox Communion, they incorporate local Indian customs, thereby reflecting the cultural integration that St. Thomas encouraged. The Syrian Orthodox Church is an Oriental Orthodox Church, which follows the West Syrian liturgy. It originated in the Middle East and is known for maintaining some of the oldest Christian traditions. The Jacobite Syrian Christian Church in India is a part of this tradition, with strong historical ties to the Syriac Orthodox Church of Antioch. The teachings of St. Thomas, thus, live on in the practices and faith of these communities. The churches he established have grown beyond their physical structures, they've become centers of cultural and spiritual life for these communities. The faith that he introduced continues to thrive as an integral part of India's diverse religious fabric, a testament to the enduring legacy of his mission. Remember, this journey is not about one religion triumphing over another. St. Thomas's journey is a testament to the spirit of acceptance, the will to understand, and the courage to seek common grounds amidst diversity. It's about the exchange and interweaving of philosophies and ideas. Just as St. Thomas respected and engaged with the beliefs he found in India, his teachings too were embraced and integrated into the local culture. This gave rise to a unique form of Christianity, which, while rooted in the Gospels, also took on Indian cultural elements. This synergy between cultures highlights the power of interfaith dialogue and mutual respect. To this day, St. Thomas's teachings continue to inspire his followers in India and around the world. He is remembered as a symbol of faith, a testament to the power of belief and the spirit of exploration, both physically and spiritually. His journey shows us that love, compassion, and understanding can transcend all boundaries, uniting people across diverse cultures and beliefs. Thank you for joining us today on Philosophy Examined. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into philosophical and spiritual realms. Until next time, keep examining.